Hello everybody and welcome back to Murder on the Orient Express. We are back as Joanna Locke. If you uh, saw the last video, you'll know that we have uh, come back to do some investigating to try and solve what actually happened here to Daisy. And uh, we came across a suspicious journalist when we got here. He'd already opened the police tape up and gone inside the place and he was hanging around this bunker, which we're going to try and get inside of now. He seems a bit off to me. I think he might be... Well, he's a little bit suspicious. If you uh, if you want to find out, go back and check the last video out. If you've not seen it already, you'll know what I mean. Uh, yeah, so we're going to carry on playing as Joanna here and hopefully get inside this bunker and solve whatever has happened here. All right, so this padlock. So this is going to be probably the code that's inside the house that I can't remember what it is. So we'll just go and check that out. I think it's that deer head that's on the wall. we see that from here probably not let's go inside i do really like this sort of side mission to the main game because obviously the main game is very on oh well, not on rails but it's it's got a certain story it has to follow uh 3892 whereas I, I do like this sort of side quest i hope they do more of these really enjoying this game and i hope that they do they carry on and do more Poirot and and bring Joanna along as well. They could be a team. And solve non-novel uh, sort of crimes as well. So, you know, just come up with random things that haven't been done. And... Uh, I can't I click that. There we go. And could just come up with random crimes to solve. That'd be really cool. I think they could have a whole series based on this. Okay, so 3892 is the code. Three. Eight, nine, two. Yes, I know I can do it. I can always use safe cracking as a career move. There. Now let's see what secrets you're hiding. Do we really want to go in here? I know we probably locked the car with the guy inside, the journalist, but do we really want to go in here and get trapped inside? It feels like we should call for backup. This must be the missing can from the pickup. Ah, missing gasoline can. The cap's been damaged and some gasoline has leaked out. That would explain the market left in the back of the pickup then. There must be more to this, surely. Why do I get the feeling we're going to have to sort of wire this in? Almost certainly, aren't we? What's this? Blueprints for... This blueprint. It looks like the bomb in the cabin. Oh, the yeah. kidnapper built the bomb here. Right outside the cabin. They are a mess. Whoever did this wiring should be struck off. That is terrible. This bunker looks like it's as old as the cabin. If not Everything older. Everything is falling apart. Okay, so what? we can't get in there because we power. I have to turn the power back on to open this magnetic door. Hmm. No, it doesn't work. Okay, so we, we kind of know what we're going to have to do here, don't we? We're going to have to reroute the power so we get Everything switched on, I would assume. All right, so we start at that one. 
Then we go... So they go through from that one. So this one is the power for the door. And then two of them come off, and then one goes in here, and the others go into the door. So only one of them is in the power line for the door, I think. No, no, they all are. This is such a confusing wiring setup. All right. Let's try and figure this out then. So, this one is... Let's go for this one for position one. I've no idea what we're doing here. So that comes in, and all those wires get mixed with each other. They come out, they go up, they go th through, and then into there. So that's the door. In this one, they come up here, through into this box, which goes into there. That one goes to the floor, that one goes nowhere, and only one of them goes in. But it's the middle one. So I think the middle wire for this one. And this end one comes up here, along, through, through there. So it's the top one. And the first two are, so it's the one on the left, I think we need switching on. So the first one is probably the far right. Is that done it? Hmm. Nope. No, it doesn't work. Which one of these goes in? I'm sure that would be the far right, though. That one's not connected. That one's not connected. So they come in here. Oh, which way around do they come in? Oh, we've not really looked at the boxes, though, have we? I think we're going to have to work backwards on this one. So it's the bottom wire that's connected. Bottom wire still, there it goes. Goes in there. Still the one on our right now, I believe. And it's the bottom wire. Still the bottom wire. Still the bottom wire. Still the bottom wire, then it goes up. So it's then that one on the... It's now the one on our left. So we were right to begin with with this one, I think. I think it's that one. Let's just check to make sure we've not got it right. Just save ourselves some time. Hmm. Oh. No, it doesn't work. I'd expect to hear some noise if we get this right, or confirmation anyway. So we need to look in the boxes, don't we? So let's work backwards again. So we've done that one. The one that comes in here... Uh, so we'll do the bottom one first. So we've got the middle wire is the only one connected. So middle wire, middle wire comes in, goes up on the right hand side, does it? Let's make sure, hang on. Up, down, round. Yep. So it's the one on the right hand side goes all the way up. So it's now on our left. So it's the one on the far left we need here as well and then the only wire that is so then one that goes in there comes through and it is the far left they go through here they go through that okay I think yeah then it's Stays on the left, hangs down a little bit, but stays on the left, it comes in. So that's okay, I think. Ooh. 
Let Aha. there be light. We have light. That is a terrible wiring system. But we're in. Perfect, it works. You do not want to get trapped in down here. What's this? Armstrong party. February Aha. 24th. The day of the kidnapping. They knew about the party and everything. I mean, you would hope so, really. They are the kidnappers. Damn, that isn't it. Why is it accept? I don't understand why it's accepted. I'm not doing those. I'm just turning the thing. And it seems to occasionally just go, all right, I'll take one. That isn't the right combination. Yeah, I'm not so Why is it just accepting them? I, I don't know if we're expecting this to change slightly or if it's to do with the lighting. I'm not entirely sure here. No, why is it again it's done it? So I think you can only go one way as soon as you go backwards. No, that didn't work. Like, okay. So you can only go forwards. We've already started. Damn, that isn't it. Okay, we'll go backwards then. We can only go backwards. Seven. Oh, is it flashing the numbers at us? Is that what it's doing? Three. Three again? Oh, we can't go three again. Hang on. No, that didn't work. Oh, this is... I don't like this. I don't like the fact that it just accepts the numbers the so easily. So we think three is the first one. Potentially. And three again? Oh. <sighs> this is going to be frustrating. I wish you could just... All right, so three's what I want. And then I want three again. No, no, oh. All right, this is an annoying padlock. Damn, that isn't it. More for the design than the puzzle, I think. No, now it's accepted four. All right, so you have to go, yeah. So it's one of those, it's an actual padlock then where you had to go left, then you go right, then you go left, then you go right. Which is really, that's fine in real life where you've got the dexterity, but when you're doing it with a mouse, this is, no, because if you click that, the slightest movement of your mouse and it moves more than one number. So three, I bet this is even right. So we can't have more than one number though, can you? Of the same, potentially, unless we don't stop. Three, is it gonna flash for us again? I don't think that flash means anything. I think we're doing this wrong again. No, that didn't work. I wonder if it's written somewhere then. I thought the noise might change, but it never seemed to alter. Maybe there's a clue. 2019? Could be. There must be a clue for what this is. Somewhere. Another golden mustache. Shiny facial hair. The good news is that it's gold. Hmm. 
There doesn't seem to be any clues around here whatsoever. This bunker looks like it's as old as the cabin. Everything is falling apart. Quite literally, the only thing we've seen with any numbers on is this calendar. That flashes, but it doesn't colorate to anything, so it just flashes three times every time. The buzzing noise didn't seem to change either. So what could this be? Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to turn the power off. Because we can't hear the, the clink of this. So I think this should... Yeah, because that makes noises now. Now we should be able to get the right code. That took a bit of working out, and I'll be honest, I did have to look it up. <laughs> because nothing seemed to be... Uh, Working. Five. One. I hope we haven't missed it. It's just skipped a couple. Seven. I knew I could do 5173. it. 5173. I can always use safe cracking as a career move. We certainly can as long as we've got Google to help us out there. Because I tried a lot of things. And none of them would work. But it was it was the noise that was uh, the electric noise that was getting in the way. Okay, what have we got in here? A lot of cash. A hair on it. That looks like a hair caught in the band around the money. Forensics will tell me for sure. But that doesn't look like Daisy's color. Could be the kidnappers. We'll still take it for DNA. An expensive looking JM. pen with the initials JM? Hmm. What's its story? It's Daisy's hair clip. The same as the picture I saw at the Armstrong house. What a weird Daisy thing to put in the safe. get locked up again until forensics get here. Okay. Time for forensics to attack that bunker. And Clark? He's too sure of himself. I need to get him into an interrogation room and find out what really makes him tick. Sounds like a plan. Let's go. I'll secure the bunker for the six. Progress at last. See, when we first got here in the previous episode, when I walked through here, there was like a bunker sound, like you heard the door go. So I wonder what it was. That's before we found our way in there. So I think he was in the bunker and came back out again. He was just kind of locking it up. He's got some serious questions to answer. I know my rights. You can't keep somebody locked up in a car like this, you know. You wouldn't do it if I was a dog. Do they have bathrooms at the station? Do they have bathrooms at the station? Where do you think everybody goes to the toilet? I have the right to make a phone call, Detective whatever your name is. That phone is an outside line. Hello, boss. It's Michael Clark. I'm still on the Armstrong kidnap, but there's a small problem. I got caught being someplace I shouldn't be. I'm at the police station. No, I'm not under arrest. Just questioning. Fire me. Why? The station's integrity? You're kidding me, right? If you think I've screwed up that badly, then... Fire me. Got that? Fire me. Yes. Do it. That didn't go well. I think I got my point across. What happens now? Go ahead. Then we'll have a chat. That doesn't seem like a legit phone call, based on the conversation we had with his employer. They said they hadn't heard from him for seven months or something, like seven or eight months. That didn't sound like a phone call you'd have with somebody you'd not spoken to for most of a year. That was strange. Okay. Now that we've taken your DNA, we can begin. Interview of suspect Michael Clark, 6 p.m. March 30th, 2019. This interview is being recorded. By elves behind the mirror, no doubt? You were arrested at a crime scene where you damaged police barricade tape. I'll pay for a new roll. That's a Class A misdemeanor, and it carries a $500 fine. Oh, that's unfortunate. To begin with, 
Where were you on the night Daisy Armstrong was kidnapped? I was watching TV in my motel room, but I had my police scanner on. I heard the first reports that the little girl was missing. No way the police at the scene were going to let me get close. I set my alarm so I could get on the story first thing in the morning and tried to sleep. It was difficult. Can anybody confirm where you were? No. Afraid not. I was alone and sleepless. A sad combination. And I realize a bad alibi. Okay. Let's confront him about the car, because we know... Let's start with why you went to the cabin. If the police were interested in it, I was interested in it. That pickup of yours, that's a very nice ride. Especially for a stringer who only gets a few stories on the air. How can you afford it? When Boston 6 does use a story, they pay okay. That truck is top of the range. How much did it set you back? Fifty-five, sixty thousand dollars $60,000? When I have to, I do what everybody else does. I take out a loan. How about you, detective? You got a loan on your car? He's enjoying himself. I need to throw him off balance somehow, surprise him into making an error. Explain to me again how you got to the crime scene. I listened in on the police radio frequency. Anybody can do it with a scanner. I headed for the crime scene in my trusty pickup, like I've done for years. After the forensic team left, I needed to see the crime scene for myself. I got to the bunker just before you arrived. Okay, which of these sentences can lie? I listen on the police radio. Anybody can do it with a scanner. That's that's technically true. You can't do that in this country anymore, but you can still in America. I headed for the crime scene in my trusty pickup I've done for years. That's that's a lie. Forensic team left. I needed to see the crime scene for myself. I got the bunker. I mean, I think they're all lies, but I don't think. Because that's not even in your name. So I think that one. You said you've been driving that pickup for years? You heard right. Thanks to it, I never miss a story. You say you've been using your pickup for years, but the title certificate is not in your name. The truck belongs to somebody named Stephen Baker. Okay. I don't get why the pickup is so important to you, but I guess my ego made me say that. Yeah, the pickup was lent to me by a friend. I couldn't afford it even with a loan. I think you stole it. Mr. Clark, you needed a pickup like that for our mountain roads, so you stole that one. Try proving it. But while you run off on some wild goose chase, you can't hold me. Let's move on to the gas cans and what we found in your pockets when you were brought in here today. That sounds exciting. Burn the place, bunker location. I mean, they're both relevant. We found one in the bunker and burn the place. I guess that's what you could have been thinking of doing. Hmm. Uh, let's go bunker How location. How did you know there was a bunker at the end of the property? How did your forensic team miss it? They were concentrated on the cabin. It was pitch black out there. Small town cops with small town minds. I'm sorry, that was unkind. You know, I'm a bit like you. My job is to find something a news program's viewers want to see. You do it for justice. I do it for money. I just have more flair than you. I know you're lying, Mr. Clark. I followed your footprints from the cabin, and they led directly to the bunker. It was very well hidden. You had to know it was there. Think whatever you want, detective. Mm, I'm not sure we got him there, did we? We can't confront him again. I mean, we don't know he was going to burn the place down. It seemed likely. Yes. You say you're a journalist. A stringer for Channel 6 News in Boston. I sell my stuff to lots of media outlets. Camera was left in the car. I mean, that's got incriminating photos on it. The name of the editor-in-chief. I mean, I do think he is a journalist. I just think he's done this to get a story out of it. 
Ah, which one? Skip How is one. your editor doing? Last time we spoke, she was fine. But that was months ago. Yeah, What's her name out. again? I, um, I work for lots of stations and lots of editors. She knows your name, but you don't remember hers? I'm not great with names. It's Kelly Johnson. Oh, yeah. Kelly. <laughs> I just made that name up. <laughs> Good for you. Her name is Abby Wilson. Mr. Clark, you lie like you breathe. Huh. Well, that was mean. He thinks he's invincible. I need to play his ego. That's the key. What are you doing in the Berkshires? And what is your connection to the Armstrong case? For the past few months, I've been working on a big case. Boston Six News was looking forward to my next story. The Armstrongs have been on my list of potential targets for a long time. I changed gears when Daisy was kidnapped and started investigating the Armstrongs. Okay, well, he could have changed gears. That could be true. The Armstrongs have been on my list of potential targets for a long time. I think that is true because he had photos preceding everything. Come on, Joanna. You're a better That's detective that than that. So which one is it then? It contains a lie. They were looking forward to his next story. Kind of. They are looking forward to his next story. So you just stumbled on a mm. major kidnapping story during your stay in the Berkshires. Yeah, I was researching PCBs in the river for crying out loud. Then, wow, the Armstrongs. That's not a Science Sunday report. That's a lead. Sometimes you just get lucky. Your camera in the pickup. There were photos of Daisy from before she was kidnapped. The Armstrongs are a famous family like the Kennedys or Hollywood couples. Gossip sites love them. People want to see how they live. I started out just stealing candid shots. Paparazzi live on getting that one exclusive shot. Steamy, intimate, whatever. Then when the kidnapping happened, I realized I was here first. What an opportunity. And I jumped at it. You have an answer for everything. You're not very good at this, are you? How long have you been on the job? Long enough to put you away for life. If you killed that little girl. I know that Clark is lying. I need to reconstruct the whole sequence of events in order to understand what happened. This guy is a piece of work. All right. So, what happened? Uh, so that's us arriving. So... Uh, Clark... Does he take this out first? I don't know which one he does first. Let's say he crosses the police tape first, then he takes the can out. Then he opens the bunker. We arrive, he throws it in, closes the bunker. There we go. Score, one for the good guys. I'll tell you what really happened. You waited until forensics left and arrived in your probably stolen pickup. You grabbed a can of gasoline from your truck. You then went into the cabin to check if Daisy had been found. You then went straight to the bunker to see if it had been discovered, planning to set it on fire and destroy all the evidence inside. Before you could start the fire, you heard me arrive. So you hastily left your gas can and closed the hatch. You didn't think I could open the bunker. If I hadn't found you, I expect you would have burned down the cabin too. I'm not gonna make fun of you, detective, or how you handled my interrogation. You're obviously very new at this. I swear I'm telling the truth. I didn't know the bunker was there until the moment you showed up. I seem to have trumped your entire police force. When I get the DNA results from the bunker, we'll continue this conversation. You have no concrete evidence against me whatsoever. The lab results will be in soon. You won't get away with this. See that call? That's your arrest warrant and a one-way ticket to prison. I'll be right back. 
I bet it's not him. <laughs> After all this. Hello, sir. I think I found the man who kidnapped Daisy Armstrong. I'm interrogating him now. Hold on, Detective Luck. I have some bad news. Someone set fire to the cabin in the bunker. The fire department is on the scene, but they say it's too late. Th that's impossible. My suspect has been in the interrogation room with me all evening. We can't hold him. Suzanne Moreau. Her fingerprints are on the wine bottle found in the cabin. We also found an unknown person's fingerprints, but they don't match your suspects. Sir, with all due respect, I'm convinced Michael Clark is involved. Detective, I'm cutting you some slack already. But we cannot hold your suspect simply because you're convinced he's guilty. We have evidence that Suzanne was working with an accomplice, Noah Garrity. I order you to release the reporter and arrest this Moreau. L let me just check my last lead. The DNA analysis of the hair found in the bunker safe. The results just came in. I know how hard this is. I... Okay. Get the DNA results. Detective Locke, I will give you one hour maximum. Then you close the file and arrest Suzanne Moreau. Thank you, sir. We get the DNA. Where's the DNA? Just got to ask him about his accomplice. Is that what we can do? Uh, I think he's... Well, I don't think he's going to get away with it, but... I think we could have handled that interrogation better. Who did you call earlier? An editor from the Boston Six News. Of course, An editor the phone you call. repeatedly said should fire you. That was your accomplice, oh. wasn't it? You were telling him to start the fire. An accomplice? Wait, what? Who's the name of Rashid's accomplice? What? I know it was Noah you called. I'm saying nothing more without the presence of my lawyer. Stay right where you are. I'm not done with you yet. Wow. Do I hear grounds for a lawsuit? Some poor innocent woman is being accused instead of you. You set her up, didn't you? You have to let me go, detective. All I need is one more phone call to the lab. I know it's you and I'm going to prove it. Hello, this is Joanna Locke. I need the results of the DNA test I asked you for. Hi, detective. Sorry, we only have the DNA sequence. We haven't had time to compare it with the suspects yet. It'll take seven more hours. I'm sorry, but you are not the only one on the waiting list. Send your analysis to my computer in the office. I'll do the comparison myself. I need authorization. I have a murderer who is going to walk free unless I get those results now. Fine, we'll send it to you right away, but I'll have to log this. It's my last chance. Well, we're going to have to have fingers crossed then. Compare the DNA results mind map. Where's her office There's then? a computer in the office next to the interrogation room. I can check the results of the DNA test there. Oh, whoa. Okay. Unknown DNA found in the cabin. His DNA. I don't think it's his DNA. Don't think it's hers either.
Who's that? It's her DNA. Which is not the result we wanted, really. Oh, no. No! Suzanne? I don't understand. I was sure it would be Clark's hair. I'll have to let him go. No, it's definitely him. Well, it, him and his accomplice. I'll add these to the file. Anything that will erase Clark's smile. It's got to be him. And Noah. I think him and Noah have set Suzanne up. Case files. That's the only A reason. A lot of them for our tiny town. She did, she's, I mean, she's been there. The only comfortable chair in the whole station. But there's no time to rest. I think that's the only reason they took her to the cabin. So they could get her some evidence there. Be nice if these were real cases we could do as well. Sarah Baxter and Pierce Wells. You can leave. Sorry it didn't work out for you, detective. Maybe you should consider a career change. Ah, oh, we'll get you for something. We are not done. Oh, but we are, my dear. We are done. We'll get him for something. I had no choice but to return to the Armstrong house to arrest Suzanne Moreau. Can we plant some drugs in his car or something? Buy us some time. The arrest warrant for Suzanne Moreau. Suzanne was set up by Clark and Noah. They are the kidnappers, but I'm not giving up. When Suzanne comes up for trial, I will fight for her defense. But for now, the district attorney is in charge. If I want to stay a detective, he always has the last word. I mean, there's nothing we can do at the moment. The evidence all points to her, even though I don't believe it's her. And neither mm, does The door Joanne. is wide open. How strange. That is strange. Have you seen anything, Pussycat? Hey, is anyone there? Miss Moreau? Oh, she's not going to be Ms. dead, Moreau? is she? This is Detective Locke. Hmm, that's weird. Miss Moreau, can you oh, hear me? She's it's me, Detective Locke. You must get up now. Call an ambulance. Look, look at the pills Ms. on the Moreau? side. Come on. Miss Moreau, can you hear me? Suzanne Moreau is dead. There are no traces of blows or injuries on her body. She doesn't seem to have defended herself from anyone. Really? There's like more pills than you should ever take in a lifetime right next to her. I think it's quite obvious what's happened here. It appears Suzanne killed herself by ingesting all these drugs. Interesting. So she knew she'd been settled, that's for sure. Dear Miss Moreau, please forgive this letter. Dr. Adams has been able to reach you for several days. We wanted to let you know that your mother has passed peace. Oh, no, not another one. So everybody's dying. Your mother passed peacefully during the night of Saturday, the 29th of March. Please contact us if you would like assistance with arrangements for her or if there's anything else we can do. Suzanne was telling the truth about her mother. Hello? A confession? I killed Daisy. I was scared she would tell. If I released her from the cabin alive, I can't live with myself for what I have done. Pray for Daisy. Hashtag pray for Daisy. Ah, oh, look. So... Because everybody, she's been set up and everybody's getting wind of it's possibly her. Look at this. It's the nanny. She's responsible for the death. 
It's the nanny house. She should do such a thing. Police should lock her up for life. She doesn't deserve to live. Another immigrant comes and kills somebody. This is online hate. Because everybody thinks it's a certain thing. Just like in real life, everybody thinks they know everything. But actually, she's been set up. She must have realized at last how she'd been used. The death of her mother would have been an additional shock. And the self-righteous court of social media was as quick as usual to try and convict her. So she was done by online. Social media has got to her. And then her mum dying. And she's just decided to end it all. She must have realized at last how she'd been used. The death of her mother would have been an additional shock. And the self-righteous court of social media was as quick as usual to try and convict her. Is this her... So she was about to send this as herself then? To confess to something she'd not done? Why can't we click these? She must have realized at last the death of her... And the self... Okay, there's nothing else we can do there. I'm sure we could probably find more information out on our laptop. Suzanne's diary is missing. It's weird. This is all the stuff we looked at before, isn't it? So for some reason, it's all lit up again like we've never seen it before. called the district attorney to inform him. This is Detective Locke, sir. I'm at the Armstrong house. Have you arrested Suzanne Moreau? She's dead, sir. Apparent suicide, but I need a forensics team. She killed herself out of remorse for her part in the crime. We don't know that yet. I'm calling forensics now, but I wanted you to know. What a mess. Stay on site until forensics arrive. Yes, sir. Standing by. The investigation was officially closed. I was certain that she was innocent, and Clark had been responsible for four deaths and then vanished into thin air with a million dollars. Dollars marked, though, and not easily spent. I didn't care if the case was officially closed. I swore, Mr. Poirot, whatever it took, I would hunt him down. Well, we're back on the Orient Express then. I'll tell you what, the, the side case here is very intriguing. I'm really looking forward to the next part of Joanna's story. I waited for the forensics story. team, then went into the station to write my report. I was officially off the case. Thank you, mademoiselle. That obviously cannot be the completion of your story. If I might ask a question? Of course. Who was Ratchet? Ratchet was Noah, Miss Moore's boyfriend. Ratchet was Michael Clark, the reporter. That's true, isn't it? Because he came up who was Ratchet's alibi. And I thought, what the hell was that about? Because Michael Clark, the reporter, he was Ratchet? Absolutely. I was the I only law enforcement the official to question Clark. I knew this wasn't his first kidnapping. You looked for similar cases. What do you Americans call the MMOs? Means, motive, and opportunity. Yes, I looked for someone in plain sight. Someone on the edge of a kidnapping case. Someone in plain view, keeping track of the investigations. An innocent witness, a concerned neighbor, even another reporter. And eventually you found a name behind an alias. Yes, I found a name. Cassetti, the real name. The real name of the man you call Ratchet is Cassetti. This explains much, mademoiselle, but not all. It explains why she is our number one suspect. But not how she came to be on this train. Attends, she has grown pale. I, I don't know what's wrong with me. Excuse me, Mr. Poirot. I don't feel very well. You are exhausted and still feeling the effects of the drug. Stay with us, mademoiselle. One more effort. I need to know your recent movements. I snuck aboard the train. This I observed. You came directly to this room? Yes. Yes, and other than a couple of careful trips to the... The ladies, yesterday, I never left this room. I didn't want to be spotted by Ratchet. 
yesterday I, I chatted with my roommate, Miss Schmidt, I think, here in our room. She brought me some dinner. I got very sleepy and nodded off. And now she nods off again. Is this a joke? She must be faking so we can't interrogate her further, Poirot. No, Book. She really seems to have fallen asleep again. It is my fault. She must have been given a dangerous dose of sleeping pills last night. The effects should wear off soon, I hope, but I am afraid asking her to tell us her story was too much for her. Pinch her, Poirot. She's faking. Her eyes are dilated. She is not faking, and there will be no pinching. Dr. Constantine, please stay with her. Monsieur Book, ask the other passengers to gather in the dining car. There are still many questions I need to ask. But all of them together? Won't someone overhear your questioning the others? I will speak softly because I am trained to do so. They will speak softly because they want to. Very well. I will do as you say. Okay. Well, I think we'll uh, we'll leave it there. That was a very interesting episode. I really enjoyed that one. It was I like the way it's all tying in together as well. And... Uh, Hopefully, we'll be able to uh, wake Joanna up in the next episode and find out more of what's been going on in between then and now. But until then, if you have enjoyed this one, make sure you leave it a like. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you for another video very soon. <laughs>